fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Are you Silver! When a jury brought in a verdict of guilty against Jess Wade and Pete Moore, two bandits who killed a guard during a bank holdup, the sentence of death was mandatory under the state law. They were lodged in the jail at Adobe Hills while a scaffold was being constructed to hang them both. From the window of their heavenly barred cell, Jess and Pete could see the work going on. It's almost finished, Jess. The workmen should have it done by supper time. Yeah, it looks that way, Pete. Yeah, I can't figure out why Lefty hasn't shown up. He always has. Well, all I've got to say is that if he don't show up mighty soon, the two of us will be swung from that scaffold come sun up. Shut up. Here comes the sheriff with our biddles. Well, good morning, gents. Hi, Sheriff. I brought your breakfast. How's your appetite? All right. How's yours? <laughs> Mine's good. I figured yours might be tapering off some. Shove it under the door. All right. There you are. Now, gents, according to law, you've got a right to say what you want to eat for your last meal. Yeah, we know that. That'll be your supper tonight. <laughs> You can eat it any time up to midnight, and you can start figuring what you'd like to have. All right, Sheriff. We'll let you know. Always try to oblige, you know. Tell the deputy what you want. He'll get it, if it's to be had. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger, having learned through a newspaper account of the pending execution rode toward Adobe Hills in company with his Indian friend, Tonto. Making camp a few miles from town, the Lone Ranger began putting on a disguise. Why you put on disguise, Kimasati? Because I'm going to town, Tonto. The execution will draw a crowd, and I can mingle with it without my identity becoming known. Oh. You think maybe someone tried to help Jess Wade and Pete Moore get out of jail? Yes. Those two men are broken out of some of the best jails. It's my opinion that they've always had outside help. If I mingle with the people on the streets, the cafes and so forth, I may recognize one of their associates. Maybe you go see Sheriff, huh? Not unless I see someone I think he should know about. See, Tonto, I don't know Sheriff Abernathy. He was elected only last fall. Yeah, me remember. 
Him take job after other sheriff died. Yes, that's right. The former sheriff was familiar with criminals. I'm not sure the present one is. Now, do you think I can pass as a farmhand? Oh, n- nobody know you now. Overalls and straw hat make you look plenty like farmer. Then I'll get on my way to town. Here's a look. When the Lone Ranger reached town, he decided to look over the physical setup for the execution before mingling with a crowd that was already beginning to fill the town. He rode leisurely around the jail, carefully studying all possible avenues of escape. But finding none, he started to look for a shady place to hit silver. Inside the jail, Jess Wade pressed his face against the bars of the small window. You give me the jitters staring at that scaffold, Jess. Come away from that window. I'm not looking at the scaffold. And what in thunder are you looking at? Come here, Pete. What's the matter? Yeah, look across the street yonder, by that big cottonwood. Yeah, what about it? See that fellow hitching that white horse to the rack? Yeah. Isn't there something familiar about him? Not that I recollect. Why? Yeah, I can't figure it out. I don't recollect seeing him either. But that white horse, I'd swear I saw one or both of them somewhere. Hey, Jess, look. Isn't that the sheriff starting over toward him? Yeah, it's the sheriff, all right. Because he's going to have a talk with him. Now, what do you make of that? Good morning, mister. Good morning, sheriff. I believe you're a stranger in town. Yes, I am. I've been watching him. So? You seem mighty interested in our jail and that scaffold they're building over there. I was curious. Yeah, so am I. Curious to know just who you are and what you're doing in town. What you doing, Sheriff? Courting the farmer boat? Yeah. Oh, shut up. I think I can identify myself to your satisfaction. Well, then do it. Don't let that farmer send any goose eggs, Sheriff. <laughs> I'd uh, rather not hear, Sheriff. Can we go to your office? That shoots me. I was figuring on taking you there anyway. Come on. Don't forget the goose eggs. <laughs> there they go, Jess. Yeah, I see them. They're heading across the street like they're coming here. Uh, well, it's some farmer friend of the sheriff's. Yeah, I guess so. I can't get that white horse off my mind. Somewhere. Hey, Jess, there's Lefty Hill. Where? In the crowd down there watching the cop in the sea. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see him. <laughs> I knew he'd show up. Lefty's never failed us yet. Leave your hand out the window at him. Let him know you see him. Oh, you fool. Somebody might get suspicious of him. Anyway, he sees us. Just look at him. He's rigged out like a swell, ain't he? <laughs> he sure is. <laughs> Derby hat, checkered coat, and a big cigar in his mouth. <laughs> wonder what he's got in that bag he's told. Whatever it is, it's got something to do with getting us out of here. Hey, quiet down. The sheriff just came in his office. Uh, that farmer's with him. I can hear him talk. Quiet now, Pete. I'm going to listen over by the cell door. Maybe I can make out that farmer. Mister, tell me who you are. Does this mean anything to you? Bullet. Silver bullet, eh? That's right. It don't mean nothing to me, mister, unless you're implying a threat of some kind. No, it's no threat. All right, now answer me. What's your name? Where do you live? I'm sorry, Sheriff, I can't answer that. I hoped you'd recognize what I just showed you. Most lawmen know what it means. To me, you're just a suspicious character. Dressed up like a farmer, wearing two guns like those. All right, now get your hands up. And if I don't... I'll put a bullet through you. Realizing that the new sheriff meant business, the Lone Ranger submitted to arrest. But as the lawman searched and disarmed him, he was thinking of some way to contact Toto without having the same misfortune befall him. I'll take them fancy guns. <laughs> yeah. Now you can put your hands down. What are you going to do with me, Sheriff? Lock you up. Until you're a mind to answer civil questions. Now get moving down the cell corridor. Would you do me one favor, please? What is it? You saw where my horse is hitched. Yeah, the white stallion, I know. Would you have one of your deputies take him over to the livery stable and put him up? 
You can pay for his keep out of the money you took from me. All right. I'll do that much for you. Uh, will you attend to it right away? I'll see he gets tabled when I get around to it. I'm busy right now, so get a move on. As the sheriff and the lone ranger, the latter disguised as a farmer, moved down the corridor toward a cell at the rear, Jess Wade drew back, but studied them closely as they passed. Can you make out who he is, Jess? No, I don't recognize him. Yet that voice is familiar. Maybe some back trailer you run into sometime. Don't you figure so? Yeah, maybe. I wonder why the sheriff locked him up. Hey, someone just come in. Maybe the sheriff's deputy. Anybody go home? Hey, that's Lefty. I know his voice. He's got plenty of nerve to come walking in here. Hope he's not fool enough to shoot the sheriff. We'd never get out of town alive. He's not that big a fool. Just keep quiet and listen. Hello? Anybody at home? Keep your shirt on. I'm coming. Ah, good morning, Sheriff. Howdy, mister. What can I do for you? I won't take but a moment of your time, sir. Oh, a peddler, eh? Well, I haven't got any time to waste on peddling. I assure you I'm no peddler, Sheriff. <laughs> to the contrary, I'm selling nothing. Yeah. And what have you got in that bag? A gift for you, sir. Yes, yeah. sir, a gift that will cost you absolutely nothing. Here you are. Soap. A free sample, understand. I'm passing through your fair city here, giving away these free samples of our soap in order to acquaint the public, sir. Just smell of it, sir. Isn't it fragrant? Yeah, it smells like a French barber down the street. No, I don't want none. Here, yeah, take it. Oh, no, 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 sir. Uh, perhaps it is a bit fragrant for your... Masculine taste, sir, but please accept it with the best wishes of my company. All right, I'll keep it. But I can't waste no more time flavoring with you, I'm sorry. Quite all right, quite all right, sir. I know you must be very busy. They tell me you're hanging two gentlemen tomorrow morning. Yeah, only they're not gentlemen, they're bums. I see. Well, good day, Sheriff. Hope you enjoy our product. Yes. Now, let's see. What was it I was aiming to do? Oh, yes, now I recollect that farmer's horse. Well, Sheriff, you can knock off and get some sleep. I'll take over. Oh, hello, Deputy. Yeah, I could use some sleep. I've been up all night. You trot along home. I'll take care of things around here. Gee, Deputy, uh, I've got a fellow locked up in that back cell. Yeah? He's a farmer. Leastwise, he looks like one. I cut him looking over the jail a while ago. He wouldn't say who he is or what's his business. So I locked him up on suspicion. I'll keep an eye on him, Sheriff. I'm going to take his horse to the livery stable now. After I get some sleep, I'll be back. About uh, supper time. Anxious to contact Toto immediately, the Lone Ranger had not taken his eyes off the great horse Silver from the moment the Sheriff turned the key in the cell door. From the small window that overlooked the street, he saw Sheriff Abernathy approach Silver. Oh, there, Philip. <laughs> Steady now. I'll take you over to the livery stable and buy you some oats. Easy now. Just back up a little so I can get my foot in the stirrup. You trade that farmer out of his horse, Sheriff? Uh, yeah. Shut up and get away. This pit is ornery. Uh, steady there. Yeah. Hey, him, Sheriff. Hey, what's the matter with you? Oh, Hang on, oh, Sheriff. Hang on. Oh, oh. <laughs> Look out for that critter. He's a killer. Oh, he threw the sheriff a mile high. <laughs> Help me, help me. Are you hurt, Sheriff? Here, here, here. I'll give you a hand. Yes. Are you hurt? Uh, I don't think so. But that critter sure tossed me. Look at that horse go. You'll never catch him, Sheriff. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I hope I never lay eyes on him again. Oh, my back. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. When the sheriff tried to mount the great horse Silver, the highly intelligent animal did exactly as the Lone Ranger believed he would. The stallion threw the sheriff, and over the laughter of the crowd, he heard a sharp whistle, which went unheeded by all but him. Wheeling about, his heels lashing out at those who would have grabbed his reins, the great horse sped out of town. Toto was grooming his own horse, Scout, when the latter nickered. <coughs> oh, Scout, oh, fella, oh. oh. What's the matter with you? Oh, you know, fool, Scout. Here comes Silver. Lone Ranger, not ride him. Oh, Silver, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. <coughs> Tonto knew that something had happened to the Lone Ranger. Quickly, he saddled Scout, and with Silver in the lead, he started for town. Come on, Silver, get him up, Scout! When he arrived in town, he went to the livery stable, and after making inquiry about a farmer and learning nothing, he left Scout and Silver in a stall and went to search through the crowd for the Lone Ranger. It was late in the afternoon when the deputy the sheriff left on guard at the jail went down the corridor to the cell occupied by Jess Wade and Pete Moore. Well, the sheriff says you hombres are to have anything you want for supper tonight. Have you made up your minds? Oh, we don't want to put the sheriff to any trouble. Anything you got will suit us, huh, Pete? Yeah, we're not particular. It's going to be your last meal. Don't forget that. They'll be hanging you before breakfast. Yeah, we know. But there is one thing we'd like to get. Won't be no trouble to you. What's that? Well, we'd like to take a bath. Kind of clean up. We haven't had a bath since we got put in here. Well, that's not asking much. I guess I can fix you up with water for a bath. Well, can't you get us a bar of decent soap? All we got in here is soft lye soap. That stuff takes the skin off a mule. That's right, deputy. I'd rather use carbolic acid than that stuff. <laughs> well, maybe I can fix you up with a cake of soap at that. There's a big bar of soap laying out in the sheriff's desk now. Well, that's good. You won't have to go out and buy any. <laughs> There's only one thing about it. What's that? It smells mighty fancy. Maybe you'd rather have me buy some that's not quite so high-smelling. Oh, no. Don't go to any bother. We don't mind the perfume. Of course we don't. Just bring it along, deputy. And I'll go fetch a bucket of water. The sheriff's deputy brought a bucket of water and the bar of soap that had been left in the office. He shoved these through a small gate at the bottom of the barred iron door. There's the water, and here's the soap. Now, go to it. Only one bucket of water? we got to rinse off the soap and we're done. Yeah, deputy, can't you fetch another pail of water? Can't rat it, you galoots want mansion house service. Oh, but we just... Never mind, I'll get you the second bucket. Being as this is your last bath, I reckon you got a right to make it a good one. Yeah, now, Pete, we got to work fast. Give me that cake of soap. i got to bust it open. Yes, yes. I figured we could count Lefty to get help to us somehow. You got the soap busted? <sighs> yeah. Look what was inside. A pistol. A daringer. Small but plenty deadly. It's a gun with authority that the deputy will recognize. Good. Now, hold on. There's a note stuck inside one of the barrels. What's it say? Yeah, listen. When you're ready to make the break, hang a shirt in the cell window. Then meet me at the livery stable. I'll have horses there for the getaway. Hey, here comes the deputy with a bucket of water. Good. We're ready for him. Hey, haven't you chance started that bath? What's the rush, deputy? We're not going nowhere. Well, here's the rinse water. I'll open the gate and shove it through. Freeze. <laughs> It's had a gun. How'd you Don't get move, a... Loman. Don't move an inch or I'll let you have both barrels. You can't get away Come with over this... close to the bars. Step on it. You can't get away with this, Jess. Keep I'm them telling... hands at shoulder level. That's it. Pete, grab those guns out of his pocket. I'm getting them. Yeah. That's it. Now unlock this door. Right. You won't get two miles before... Shut up. Make a squeak and I'll shoot. Yeah, the door's oh, open. Good. Now I'll fix him so he don't yell. Jess, wait. Listen. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he'll be quiet for a time. Now, Pete... Hang your shirt in the window, and we'll get to the livery stable and meet Lefty Hill. Meanwhile, Tonto had failed to learn anything of the Lone Ranger, and returning to the livery stable had taken Scout and Silver. When they reached the street, he noticed that Silver seemed to object to being led, so he gave him free rein to lead as he might. 
A few minutes later, the great horse trotted under the big cottonwood on the square and stopped at the hitch rail. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy. Easy. Silver want to stop here. Maybe this is where Lone Ranger leaves. Oh, that Lone Ranger whistle. Silver, hear him. Tonto looked about him, searching for his friend, whom he now knew to be somewhere near him. But he saw no one in the crowd garbed in farmer attire. And then he heard the shrill whistle again. He faced toward the jail. Whistle come from jail. Me go there. Me find Lone Ranger there. As Tonto raced into the sheriff's office, he heard a familiar voice calling his name. Tonto! Tonto! And knew it came from the rear of the cell block. Halfway down the corridor, he saw the deputy lying face down upon the floor, and he paused, realizing what had happened. Take the keys, Tonto. They're on the floor to the deputy. Ah, me get keys. Me let you out now. Jess and Pete got out. We'll see if they kill the deputy. Him look dead. I could hear him groaning a moment ago. Help me roll him over. Uh, uh, huh? Him alive. Yes, he is, Tonto. But he got a hard blow on the head. Go get a doctor to attend him. Then meet me at the livery stable. Why you go there, Kimasabi? I overheard Jess Wade say that that's where they'd meet Lefty Hill, a confederate. Now hurry, I'll get my guns. They're in the office. Hey, that stallion. Well, I'll be doggone. You were the same critter that throwed me. Now you're right back to the same hitch rack. You're not going to ride him again, are you, Sheriff? Well, I'm wondering how he got back here. He sure was traveling when he left. So were you traveling, only you was going up. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, here comes that farmer rode him into town this morning. Hey, how'd you get out? Sheriff, sure, there's been a jailbreak. You don't have to tell me that. No, get him up. No, you don't. Post to that gun. Let, let me go. Got him down, Ben. No, you don't. The first man who reaches for a gun will wish he hadn't. It's the fastest draw I ever saw. Hey, someone shoot him. Don't just stand there. Can you reach for a gun, Bill? Don't try it. Now, listen to me. There's been a jailbreak. Just Wade and Pete Moore escaped. They may be at the livery stable now. The sheriff and I are going there to stop them. Go get your horses and follow them. Don't do it, Ben. It's a trick he's pulling on you. All right, Sheriff. Get on that paint horse next to mine. Come on, move fast. All right, all right. Keep that gun out of my back. You may go off if you don't. Who oh, there, who? Oh, oh. Easy, Scott. It's all right. Steady, Silver. Easy, big fellow. Now, you men do as I say. Get to your horses and follow. Come on, Silver. Get up there. Oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. Sheriff. Yes, what do you want? You go to the front of the stables. Stand guard there. I'm riding to the rear. That's a trick to get away. I'll run you down with a posse. I mean it. Do as I say. Get to the front of the stables. If you hear a shot, come inside. Monsilver! Get up there. After having escaped from jail, Jess Wade and Pete Moore made their way unnoticed through the excited throng that had congregated in town to see them hang. Being on foot, it had taken some time to reach the livery stable, but they walked right past the aged stablekeeper, who was dozing in a chair in front of the barns. They found Lefty Hill bringing the horses into the runway. Oh, steady, lad. Hey, Lefty. Plan worked out perfect. It sure did. I'll listen, you two. Maybe you're out of jail. But you're not out of danger by a long shot. All we got to do is get on them horses and hightail it for cover. We won't be missed for an hour or so. That's what you think. Well, let me tell you something. What? Less than ten minutes ago, an Indian came in here and took out two horses. One was a white stallion. Well, I happen to know that stallion. The Indian called him Silver. What about it? You fool, that's the Lone Ranger's horse. What? Lone Ranger? You bet your boots. It means he's in town right this minute. And I give you one guess as to why he's in town. Just a minute. What's the matter, Jess? Now I get it. Pete, you recollect that farmer the sheriff locked up this morning? Hey, you're right. He was riding a white stallion, and you said you were sure you knew him. Wait a minute. What are you hombres talking about? <laughs> Lefty, you don't have to worry about the Lone Ranger getting on our trail for a while. That's right, Lefty. Why not? The sheriff locked him in jail. He's in a cell right now. <laughs> are you sure of that? Sure, I'm sure. I remember his voice now. Hey, listen. That's a mob, and they're riding this way. Hey, you're right, Pete. Swing open that back door. We'll have to go out that way. 
Get your hands up. Hey, a masked man. It's him. It's the Lone Ranger. Cut him down. No, you don't. Drop your gun. Get him. Look out. That'll take care of you. I'm shot. I'm shot. I give up. I quit. You're not hurt. Get your hands up. Look, the sheriff and a posse. Tomorrow morning, you'll hang. When the Lone Ranger had left the sheriff, he had ridden to the back of the big livery barns, where he quickly removed his disguise as a farmer and donned the attire which distinguished him as the masked rider. It was little wonder that the sheriff was not only mystified, but angry when he failed to see the farmer. Well, masked man, I want to thank you for grabbing these crooks before they get away. I only wish you got that other fellow who was mixed up with them. Uh, another man was concerned in their escape? Yep, that's right, a farmer. He was riding a white stallion. Finest stallion I ever saw. Here, Silver. What do you mean, this horse? What? That's him. Did you get the fellow who was riding him? Take a look at this, Sheriff. Huh? Well, that's a what? bullet. The shell of a bullet. Does it mean anything to you now, Sheriff? Say, that voice, that bullet. Well, you were the farmer I locked up. <laughs> yes, that's right. Huh? Yes, Tonto. Um, he get doctor. Him say deputy, not hurt bad. Good. Well, Tonto, our work here seems to be finished. Let's be going. Uh-huh. Come, Silver. Well, I'll be doggone. Now, who in thunder do you reckon that critic could be? All I gotta say is, if it hadn't been for him, you'd never have gotten your hands on us, Sheriff. Well, do you know him, you crook? Yeah. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Lone Ranger? This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 